G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm comparing an old Pro V1 to a brand new Pro V1. Are there gonna be differences in distance? Are there gonna be differences in spin rate? Are we gonna get the same data with both golf balls? That's what I wanna find out today. So I just wanna give a shout out to Jez. He was the one that got me onto this. So there's a lot of information out there. If you look up new golf ball versus old or used golf ball on the internet, you come up with a bunch of these things where they're saying you're gonna lose a lot of yardage by using an old ball. So I wanted to put that theory to the test myself. I will caveat this by saying the used golf ball in this test, I bought brand new and I used it in this indoor environment for its life. I did get it to a point where it was pretty old and beat up, the paint was coming off it, it did have a few thousand shots in it. However, it's not been sitting in a lake somewhere getting waterlogged. This was a brand new golf ball that I hit thousands of shots with in an indoor environment. Now, I'm not gonna make you guys sit through the whole test. I will have a video of me hitting the shots in the corner, but I just wanna go through the data because I found it quite interesting. So as always, in a lot of these tests, the software I used was Awesome Golf, and I used my Rapsodo MLM2 Pro to actually get the data. The coaching range on Awesome Golf is perfect for this sort of stuff, and it's also perfect just for working on your game. Okay, so what I've got up now is I've got the old golf ball on the left and the new golf ball on the right. Let's talk about the data. So this was the 60 yard shot and I did this with my lob wedge. Now the biggest thing with this shot was I wanted to look at the spin and I also wanted to look at the consistency of the spin. So the old golf ball, I got it to the point where I was concerned with actually cracking the golf ball before being able to do this test. It has at least a few thousand shots in it, like I said and the golf ball actually feels rough to the touch. It doesn't have that paint, the nice new paint, like the new Pro V1 does. It is very old and it has been abused. So I wanted to really, with these shots, look at the spin and make sure the spin was consistent and didn't have too much deviation in it. So on the left, I've got the old golf ball. We had a carry of 59 and a half yards, spin rate of 8,402, and the deviation there of 165. So pretty tight for deviation. So not bad data there at all. This, it honestly felt normal. Everything felt normal. Even though I knew it was the old golf ball, it didn't feel old or didn't feel different off the face to the new golf ball. Looking at the new golf ball, so keeping those numbers in mind, we had a carry distance of 60 yards, the spin rate of 84.67. So slightly more spin but not enough to really be a concern because there is human error in this so to me those two shots were identical looking at the deviation of the spin it was 183 so again very similar to the old golf ball so to me 60 yard shots old golf ball versus new identical. I really, to be honest, I couldn't find anything in it. Okay, so moving on, next I hit pitching wedge. So again, the old golf ball is on the left, the new golf ball is on the right. Looking at the data, we had a carry distance with the old golf ball, 136 yards. Anyone who's watched my channel knows my pitching wedge carry distance is 136 yards. So really good data there. Looking at the spin rates, again, I was concerned with spin rates on these shorter shots. So we had 8,500 spin rate with the old golf ball, deviation of 286. So again, pretty tight and pretty decent spin numbers. Those are the spin numbers I'd expect to see with my pitching wedge. Looking at the new golf ball, we had 138 for a carry distance, so a couple of yards longer. However, the club head speed was an extra mile an hour, so you could argue that you're getting those extra yards just from the club head speed. Looking at the spin rates, 8380 or 8400. So again, pretty much identical. Deviation on the spin rates, 200. So there's not much in it. I mean, that to me is human error. Pitching wedges, old versus new, identical. Moving on to seven irons. Let's look at the data. So with the old ball, we had 172 yards carry, club head speed of 89, spin rates 6,000 or just under 6,000. Standard deviation on the spin rate, 131. So pretty tight, everything's pretty tight there. And that's my carry distance with seven iron. It's around 170 to 174 is what I generally say for my carry distance with my seven iron. Let's have a look 
at the new ball. So the new ball there on the right, we've had 174 yards carry, 89.7 club head speed, so slightly quicker club head speed again, potentially leading to a bit more carry distance, spin rate of 6,000, deviation on the spin rate 128. So slightly tighter deviation on the spin rates, but again, this is going to be human error. So to me, seven irons, old versus new, identical. We're starting to get to the pointy end. We're starting to, we're almost at driver. We've got four iron and then driver to go. Let's have a look at four irons. The old ball, 211 yards carry, 95 and a half club head speed, spin rates, 4,089. Deviation, 61. So pretty tight numbers there. And for the old ball, I mean, 211 carry distance is pretty good. My four iron generally goes 202 to 208, 210 on a good shot. I did catch one with the old golf ball. I absolutely buttoned this thing. It flew 215. I just hit it so sweet. So potentially those the carry distance there just slightly inflated because I just did hit one really well. But overall, pretty good numbers. Looking at the new golf ball there on the right, we had a carry distance of 209, so two yards less than the old golf ball. But again, like I said, I did button one with the old golf ball. Club head speed of 95.4, so the exact same club head speed. Spin rates, 4,082. So the spin rates are almost identical. Deviation on the spin rates with the new golf ball, 206. And again, that's potentially a bit of human error. Overall, those numbers with the four iron, old versus new ball, again, it's it's identical. There's nothing in it. All right, before we get onto driver, I just wanna say, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so because it does help us out a lot and we would really appreciate it. Okay, on to driver. The old golf ball, we had a carry distance of 271 yards, club head speed 111, Ball speed 161, smash factor 1.45, spin rate 2400, deviation 376. Pretty good numbers. So everything there looks really good and everything there looks exactly like I would expect to see it. Let's go on to the new golf ball now. So new golf ball, club head speed slightly slower. We had a carry distance of 271 and a half. Ball speed jumped up a little bit. So ball speed is 162. So if we look at the smash factor, we're getting slightly more out of a slower swing speed. And we had a spin rate of 2069, deviation 383. So you could potentially argue with driver, we got an extra, say, mile, mile and a half ball speed by having the new golf ball. So it was a little bit more efficient. For those of you who don't know, smash factor, that number, is literally ball speed divided by club speed. That's all it is. So it's how efficient your strike is on the golf ball. So for 109 and a half mile an hour club head speed, if you don't hit it out the center, you're gonna have a lot less ball speed. And so that smash factor number is gonna come down. If you keep the club head speed constant, and hit the middle of the club face, the ball speed's gonna increase. And so your smash factor number is gonna increase. So potentially the driver, you could argue that there is a little bit of ball speed in there. However, you've got to remember there is a human element to this. So for me, the carry distance is identical between the old ball and the new ball. I'm going to call it busted. To me, the numbers are so close that I have to call it as it is, as I see it. And these numbers are identical. So really interesting test there. And like I said, it'd be interesting to know if I did have a ball that I got that was submerged in water for a few months, how that would affect these distances. I'd hazard a guess to say that it would have a big detrimental effect on the performance of the golf ball. When I tested these two balls, like I said, I know what's happened to my used golf ball. I've just hit it in my simulator repeatedly. So even though the paint's coming off it, even though it looks bad, it doesn't look new, it doesn't look good, the performance is still there. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, let me know. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know down below and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.